Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well and welcome to our next lesson where we're going to be learning about a little bit more advanced but useful relationships in Eloquent and that relationship is the many to many relationship. Now I've got an example where we have a, a group that belongs to many users and a user can belong to many groups. And what we want to do is we want to know when the user joined and we want to know if it's active or net not active basically in the group if the user basically if the user uh, let me just put it like if user is active or not active in the group okay obviously there's a whole lot of number of different ways to actually do this but i'm going to do it in the context of the many to many relationship all right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a group model as we already have a user model with a default installation of Laravel. All right, so let's create our first model. All right, so if, if we open up our terminal, we just say php artisan make a model. Now, this model, we're just going to call it a group model. All right, and I just want to put a dash m for the migrations just to kind of create a migration as well all right so let's do that all right so now that is done so the next thing that we're going to do is we're not going to create a pivot model for the between the user and the group model so in order to do that we just going to create let me just create this one we got i got our server running at the background so let's just do php artisan make model now the pivot model in it's not necessary in most cases but i want to uh, use it for now so that you know how to create a pivot model with its migrations as well now the convention in laravel is your models let's say you have the two models with a pivot okay the you start with the model with the alphabetically so in our case the g in group is first then u in user is second and it needs to be singular so basically we're going to call it group and user like this now we're going to add a p for the pivot table and an m for the migration attached to it okay so what it will do it created the model for us and it also created the group user model for us uh, migration now the thing is if you only want to create the migration all right so you can do php artisan make migration all right then you can basically create your migration here right here okay so that you can do that all right but for me i'm creating the model with its migration the group user pivot migration all right so the next thing we're going to do in our app models we're going to set up the relationships between the group and the user right here so we opened our models right there right in our user model let's just start with the user first we're going to do a public uh, function okay and just do it like this a public function and the function in this case we're going to refer to as groups because it's plural many groups okay now this is going to have a belongs to many okay let's just make sure the wrong one didn't import at the top let me just delete it all right so it belongs to many and obviously i add that and then we basically going to say a return this belongs to many all right so it belongs to many uh, group class now the convention in laravel or eloquent is the next next parameter right here needs to be the pivot table now our case our pivot table under database migration which we already created is the group user so we're using the standard convention of laravel where it's alphabetical and the singular so the first group like in this case the group is g and the second one is u so so basically a group name with the in alphabetical order 
Okay. So if we add that, so basically the convention in this case will be group user. So if you named it something else, let's say your migration table, your pivot table is, is groups user. Since we're doing the convention, we don't need to add it right here. Since we're following the convention, alphabetical first and then second, and it must be single. All right. So now how do we do that? If you, if you didn't follow the convention. So if this was groups user, you need to add the pivot table right here because Eloquent won't recognize it. All right. Like this. Okay. Or if you put it like users group like this. Okay. If you did it, please put it in there. And the next table is basically the foreign keys. So we since we're following the convention, this will be the group ID and the other one will be the user. ID. But since we're following the convention, we will stick to that and we don't have to add it at all. All right. Now, the next thing is I want to be able to, as you can remember, we want to know when the user joined the group. So that means we need to add timestamps in there. Okay. So we're going to add with timestamps. All right. The next part we want to add is we want to know if the user is active or not. So how do we do that? We can do it like this um, with pivot. Okay. And the pivot will basically be active. Okay. The next thing that we want to know is if we call, um, we can actually add this a little bit later, but I will show you what that is. The next one is we want to use using uh, using our model group user model right there so group user class okay let's see if we can read it correctly all right so basically the user belongs to many groups using the group class table as the pivot with the pivot active with timestamps okay that's how it reads right now right the next thing is we need to add the same thing basically in the user in the group mod okay so let's do that so actually we can just copy and paste it to save us time but it's better if we do it from scratch for learning purposes okay so okay public function and this one is going to be the users okay and this one is going to be belongs to many in case the many to many relationship is yes, belongs to many and this one also is belongs to many okay so this one is basically going to return the same thing this belongs to many and this case will be the user class and here you can add the same thing if the pivot table is not the same as the convention then you add it in here but since we're following the convention we don't have to add it right there okay so and with the obviously the timestamps timestamps okay with timestamps and also using and now in our case will be the group user class that's our pivot model class okay now the model class right here, obviously you can add additional methods in here, um, like relationships and stuff like that. You can add in here as well, but in this lesson it's just beyond the scope. We're just going to leave it blank for now. All right. Otherwise it will be just a bit too much to take in. All right. The next one is be with pivot, uh, pivot. Now the pivot in our case will just basically be the active column in our database right let's make sure both of them are the same as you can see we're using make it like this so you can see this belongs to the user in a group and a group like that okay now the next thing as we said we're going to leave the group pivot empty but the thing the gotcha in the group user class i just want to add this you cannot use soft deletes in it if you want to use soft deletes now, probably later in series of videos and stuff like that, I will be able to explain to you what soft delete is and how, how do you work with them. 
and with soft delete R and how do you work with them so yes I will be able to explain to you and stuff like that but for now we just know the gotcha in this one is don't use soft delete okay so if you do then you just instead of extending the pivot you're just going to extend the model okay so in this case since we created the pivot table it's just basically extending the pivot all right so let's leave it for now empty all right the next part that we're going to do is we set up our models okay so we set it with a group a user so obviously we have nothing in there so but i just wanted to add that to make sure how to add that class in there with the pivot of active and obviously with the timestamps now the next one that we're going to do is in our migrations right here so now groups table right here i'm just going to add another table or a string and the string basically in this case will be just name that's all i'm going to do because I'm actually going to migrate the database in this case since Mr. Fernandez asked us just to kind of do the controllers as well in the view so I'm just going to do it in this one all right so the next one that we're going to have is our group user one so right so how do we set up the relationships and foreign keys in this one all right make it a bit small bigger for myself <coughs> pardon me right the next thing that we're going to do is we can add our foreign keys right here so we're going to do foreign id right this is from laravel 7 upwards okay so if you're using older laravel please 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 upgrade all right and uh, the next one is table foreign id now this one is going to be the user id since we're using the convention all right we we're going to use the user ID, okay? And this one is going to be constrained to the users table. And the next one we're going to add is another table for an ID. And this one is going to be the group ID. Now, this one is also going to be constrained to the groups table. Uh, close it off the reason why i'm leaving spaces is just for viewing reasons normally i would just leave it close like this all right but just for you guys to see it i just kind of just create space all right now the next thing is we want to add our active column to our pivot table all right so we're going to add a boolean now the boolean is basically going to be active with the default value with default not with default just default and it's either going to be a true or false or true like this now our guys we're going to assign just an active value of default of one all right so basically you've got that now the thing is if you're using with timestamps in your model let's go to our user model right here so if you're using with timestamps all right because we want to know when the user joined the group okay now if you're using with timestamps here make sure in your migrations let me just close that make sure in your migrations right here you have your timestamps right here otherwise the fields won't show all right so with that we can just do our migration and see the database and see how it looks like all right we seeded the database so let's quickly close it off here and see what it looks like our table right as you can see we got our user id right here and we got our group id now normally what will happen is if you don't use the with uh, pivot and all the timestamps these two columns these three columns will not be in your database now since we added them our active column as you can see we got it here in our created date and deleted date updated date, date right there all right so how do we access these columns in our controller so let's go to our controller right i created a controller called page controller now inside here i created a method now of groups uh, uh, index method now instead i just create a variable called groups now we're going to get the group with the users and then basically we pass that basically to our view right here 
all right so basically that's how we get our group this is basically called it's called eager load, loading all right so we're basically loading our users with our group model right there all right so let's pass it through to the view now the view right here in this case is just a standard view i got a header with some styling now inside here i'm basically want to iterate over our groups so we're going to do add for each okay those group uh, groups as group okay then we just want to give it an h2 and we're just going to put in here the group name okay so let's see what this looks like right so as you can see we've got our group names right there and we've got our um, all of them underneath each other all stacked up now this is our header right there now the thing is what i want to do is i just want to kind of create hate the heading for all the groups so just to kind of distinguish them a bit because underneath all of the groups i want to add all the users in that group okay so let's do that okay so what i've done is i just added some space y between between the elements right there and the next part is basically we've got our h2 right here now i obviously added some styling in there now the next part that we're going to do is we're going to access the user through the group now basically what we're doing is we can create another for each and we can access the group by the users and then we can iterate over the users in that group okay so as you can see we we're calling on that relationship that we have the pivot relationship right here uh, the group the users right here okay so we got it right there the next part is we call on that group's relationship inside here all right so for each user i'm just going to create another h2 and it's just going to be the user dot name okay so let's just give it a class as well just text excel uh, just make let's leave it for now like that okay so we got a for each inside another for each right there obviously if i do it like this my editor which kind of just move it back all right and the next part is to see if we can see it in a browser so if we refresh here you will see we got our group right there and then we got all our users inside that group right there okay how cool is that the last one under arizona this is basically um just faker names that i used kind of state names um just as a group names just for an example as you can see all the groups are filled our next part i want to do is just underneath them i want to find out when this user joined the group okay so let's go all right so underneath here we can just create a span and we're going to call it joint uh, date and I just want to give it a class as well of uh, small text x extra small okay and we're doing to do a join date now the thing about the join date what we want to do is we want to call on our pivot table okay so we can do it like user all right so we user and then we're going to call on the pivot all right on the pivot table basically our table that we created in our database the pivot right now the intermediate table and we want to see the created add date right there and obviously i want to format it a bit just to look a little bit nicer so i'm just going to put the day month and the year only let me just move this a little bit like this and just give us some space so that you guys can clearly see what I'm doing. All right, so we've got our span right there. So basically we're iterating over the group users, okay? And then we're putting the users in the group and inside the group right there, we're getting the user name. And obviously we're looking for the pivot table when the user joined. So let's see what we can see in our browser right there. Let's go there. And if we refresh, you will see we create we got our name in the user and they got the join date right there okay so if we go to our table right here you will see this date right here 
is basically the date that we're referencing inside our pivot table. Now, the next part that I want to know, I want to know if the user is active or not. All right, so how can we do that? Right, so I'm just going to create another, let me say, a div. Oh, yes, let's create a div. Right, inside the div, I just want to create, um, yes, let's do it. Let's do a ternary operator. Okay, so basically, if the user dot pivot is basically active, if it is active, question mark, pivot, okay, ternary, and then we're basically going to say active else, we're going to say not active. Right. Let's see. Right, so if we get it here, you would see we've got not active. We've got for Jacqueline that's active. And we've got Alna that's active as well. This one is not active. Kind of doesn't stand out a bit too much. So I want to, the yes, kind of want to make it the color, the text green if they're active and red if yellow if they're not active. So let's do that. So we're going to do a ternary again, obviously inside the class right here. Uh, inside our diff class. Let me just move this down a bit. Right. So we're going to add a class. And I'm going to put the text of small. Okay. Then I'm going to add our ternary operator in there. Okay. And instead of active, I just want to give it a background. BG. A text a green of 500. And this one, if it's not active, then text red or 500. Yeah, that means we said we're going to do yellow. So let me let me stick to what I just said I would do. Okay, so let's see if it works. Right, as you guys can see, if it's uh, the user is not active, you will get it like this. And then your active is obviously green. And as you can see, and we did all of that by calling to the pivot relationship between the group and the user. Now, the next part that I want to do is just want to kind of just create some styling and spacing there. But there's another thing that I want to show you about the relationship. Now, as you guys can see, we're calling on the pivot table. But let's say someone else is looking through your code and they'll be like, but what does pivot even mean? Now, you can give this a custom name. All right. So let's go to our model and set up that name. So because of the belongs to many, we can actually add as. Now we can call this community, <laughs> community like this, okay? So we can uh, call the pivot table community. So as you can see, if we can just add it under the other one as well. So if we now go to the browser, obviously things will break. So if we go here and we refresh, obviously it will break because it will reading on active property or null, all right? But what if just change that pivot to the name we just gave it. So if we go to our index page right here, and instead of pivot, let me just copy all of them and just call it community like this. All right. So we replace the user community if it's active or the user community when it's created. At. Okay. So let's see. You can obviously call it whatever you guys want. This is just an example. So obviously I would, my naming convention will be a little bit different, but this is just an example. All right. Let's see if it works now. As you can see, it works. All right. So everything is perfect right here. All right. So that is basically the more or less the structure for many to many relationships in Eloquent. Quite handy to know and all that kind of stuff. But there's one couple of things I still want to show you. How do you actually attach the model to uh, the other model? Right, now how do we create that kind of relationship? All right, now the thing is that what you do is, let's say we got a, a store method. Okay, we've got a store method right here. Now, let's say we create a group. Okay, so we're going to call it a group. Obviously, I'm not going to, because normally what we will have is we will have a request 
request then we obviously do the validation and stuff like that but i'm not going to do it i just want to show you how you would deal it inside your models okay so basically a group and we're going to just say uh, group and we're obviously going to say create all right then you're obviously going to have a whole bunch of things like the name and stuff like that in here all right but now that's not what i wanted to show you all right then the thing that you do is with a group is you're going to sync you can use the sync method you can obviously sync it with the user users right class so the notation to use is basically the sync method so if it was a post in our case we will do a post if you guys remember the block then we obviously sync it with the tags with the many to many relationship right there or the another method they can do is called the attach method right there okay and if you delete the post let's say now uh, we've got a public function and we call it delete or destroy uh, if you're using the resource controller it will be the destroy method like here so let's do the destroy and basically what you will do is you will just do post dot detach basically obviously the tags but in our case it will be the group and basically attach i'm just using it as an examples okay as the users okay in this case when we detach we would just basically be the group or detach obviously the users right and obviously we'll have a parameter like group and group right here so that when you pass it through the route you will have the parameter right there and you will obviously pass it through right here and you can just do it like this and that's obviously and then you just do the group and delete okay easy peasy stuff All right if you guys like the video please give it a like if you didn't like the video please give it this like and if you have any more questions please ask them in the comment section and I will try to respond to it and the best source as always guys is to learn how to read the Laravel documentation but I know sometimes it's kind of difficult because there's a lot of things some of the times there's things that you cannot quite figure out on your own in there and you kind of just have to go by experience and things like that and yes all right Thank you guys for watching and I know the video is a bit long, but I kind of, for Mr. Fernandez, <laughs> I, uh, he asked for the controller and the view, so I did it all for him in this lesson. And thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Like it if you like it, subscribe to the channel if you, it will just help us out and uh, so that more people can find the videos. And yes, positive or negative feedback, always appreciate it. Thank you guys and goodbye.